Shaw. The correct facts. George Bernard Shaw, 1856 to 1950, was an Anglo Irish playwright. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1925. Shaw's instincts were to refuse this honour, but his wife persuaded him to accept it as a tribute to Ireland. He also won a Hollywood Oscar in 1939 for the film version of his play Pygmalion. He is the only writer to win both awards. He wrote over 60 plays, but Pygmalion is probably his most famous work because in 1956, after his death, it was adapted into the highly successful musical for stage and screen My Fair Lady. He died, aged 94, after falling off a ladder. Two point two Act two, scene one. Well, I think that's the whole show. It's really amazing. I haven't taken half of it in, you know. Oh, would you like to go over any of it again? Uh, uh, no, thank you. Not now. Tired of listening to sounds? Yes, it's a fearful strain. I rather fancy it myself because I can pronounce 24 distinct vowel sounds, but your 130 beat me. I can't hear a bit of difference between most of them. <laughs> oh, that comes with practice. What's the matter? A young woman wants to see you, sir. A young woman? What does she want? Well, sir, she says you'll be glad to see her when you know what she's come about. She's quite a common girl, sir. Very common indeed. I should have sent her away, only I thought perhaps you wanted her to talk into your machines. Oh, that's all right, Mrs Pierce. Has she an interesting accent? Oh, something dreadful, sir, really. I don't know how you can take an interest in it. Let's have her up. Show her up, Mrs Pierce. Very well, sir. It's not for me to say. This is rather a bit of luck. I'll show you how I make records. We'll set her talking, and then we'll get her onto the phonograph so that you can turn her on as often as you like with a written transcript before you. This is the young woman, sir. <sighs> Why, this is the girl I jotted down last night. She's no use. Uh, be off with you, I don't want you. Oh, don't you be so saucy. You ain't heard what I come for yet. Oh, we are proud. He ain't above giving lessons. Not him. I heard him say so. Well, 
I ain't come here to ask for any compliment. And if my money's not good enough, I can go elsewhere. I'm come to have lessons, I am. And to pay for them too, make no mistake. Well, what is it you want, my girl? I want to be a lady in a flower shop. But they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. He said he could teach me. Well, here I am, ready to pay him, not asking any favour, and he treats me as if I was dirt. What's your name? Eliza Doolittle. How much do you propose to pay me for the lessons? Oh, I know what's right. A lady friend of mine gets French lessons for 18 pence an hour from a real French gentleman. Well, you wouldn't have the face to ask me the same for teaching me my own language as you would for French. So I won't give more than a shilling. Take it or leave it. It's almost irresistible. She's so deliciously low, <gasps> so horribly dirty. Oh, I ain't dirty. I washed my face and hands before I come, I did. You're certainly not going to turn her head with flattery, Higgins. I shall make a duchess of this draggle-tailed gutter snipe. Oh, wow! Yes, in six months, in three if she has a good ear and a quick tongue, I'll take her anywhere and pass her off as anything. We'll start today, now, this moment. Take her away and clean her, Mrs. Pierce. Oh, ha! Two point three, Act Two, Scene Two. Say your alphabet. Ugh, I know my alphabet. Do you think I know nothing? I don't need to be taught like a child. Say your alphabet. Say <sighs> it, Miss Doolittle. <sighs> you will understand presently. Do what he tells you and let him teach you in his own way. Oh well, if you put it like that, I. Say, say, day. Stop! <sighs> Listen to this, Pickering. This is what we pay for as elementary education. This unfortunate animal has oh. been locked up for nine years in school at our expense to teach her to speak and read the language of Shakespeare and Milton. And the result is I, oh. B, C, D, C, A, B, C, D. Oh, 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 but, but, but I'm saying it. A, B, C. Stop. Oh. Say a cup of tea. A uh, cup of tea. Put your tongue forward until it squeezes against the top of your lower teeth. Now say cup. <laughs> I can't. Cup. Good. Splendid, Miss Doolittle. By Jupiter. She's done it at the first shot. Pickering, we shall make a duchess of her. Now, do you think you could possibly say tea? Not tea, mind. If you ever say be, say, day again... You shall be dragged around the room three times by the hair of your head. Tea, 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 tea. I can't hear no difference, except that it sounds more genteel-like when, when you say it. Well, if you can hear that difference, what the devil are you crying for? 
Pickering, give her a chocolate. No, no. Never mind crying a little, Miss Doolittle. You are doing very well. And the lessons won't hurt. I promise you I won't let him drag you round the room by your hair. Be off with you to Mrs. Pierce and tell her about it. Think about it. Try to do it by yourself. And keep your tongue well forward in your mouth instead of trying to roll it up and swallow it. Another lesson at half past four this afternoon. Away with you. Two point four, Act Three, Scene One. How do you do, Mrs. Higgins? Mr. Higgins told me I might come. <laughs> Quite right. I'm very glad indeed to see you. How do you do, Miss Doolittle? Colonel Pickering, is it not? <laughs> I feel sure we have met before, Miss Doolittle. I remember your eyes. How do you do, my daughter Clara? How do you do? How do you do? I've certainly had the pleasure.、Uh, my son Freddy. How do you do?、Uh, will it rain? Do you think? The shallow depression in the west of these islands is likely to move slowly in an easterly direction. There are no indications. Of any great change in the barometrical situation. <laughs> How awfully funny! What is wrong with that, young man? I bet I got it right. Killing. I'm sure I hope it won't turn cold. There's so much influenza about. It runs right through our whole family regularly every spring. <gasps> My aunt died of influenza, so they said. But it's my belief they done the old woman in.、Uh, done her in? Yes. Lord love you. Why should she die of influenza? She come through diphtheria right enough the year before. <gasps> I saw her with my own eyes. Fairly blue with it she was. They all thought she was dead. But my father. He kept ladling gin down her throat till she came to so sudden that she bit the bowl off the spoon. <laughs> Dear me! What call would a woman with that strength in her have to die of influenza? What become of her new straw hat that should have come to me? Somebody pinched it, and what I say is, them as pinched it done her in. What does doing her in mean? Oh, that's the new small talk.、Uh, to do a person in means to kill them. You surely don't believe that your aunt was killed, do I not? Them she lived with would have killed her for a hat pin, let alone a hat. But it can't have been right for your father to pour spirits down her throat like that. It might have killed her. Not her. Gin was mother's milk to her.、Oh. Besides, he'd poured so much down his own throat that he knew the good of it. Do you mean that he drank? Drank?、Uh, my word! Something chronic. How dreadful for you! Not a bit. It never did him no harm, what I could see, and always more agreeable when he had a drop in. When he was out of work, my mother used to give him fourpence and tell him to go out and not come back until he drunk himself cheerful and loving like. There's lots of women has to make their husbands drunk to make them fit to live with. Yeah, what are you sniggering at? The new small talk. 
You do it so awfully well. Oh, have I said anything I oughtn't? Not at all, Miss Doolittle. Well, that's a mercy anyhow. What I always say <coughs> is... <coughs> well, I must go. So pleased to have met you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Colonel Pickering. Goodbye, Miss Doolittle. Goodbye, all. Are you walking across the park, Miss Doolittle? If so... Walk? I... Not bloody likely. I'm going in a taxi. Two point six. Adjective order. One. You must have some breakfast. You'll be starving by lunchtime. I have had breakfast. I had some delicious brown wholemeal bread with honey. Two. There's been a break-in at the National Gallery. Did they get much? No, I don't think so. It just says here, thieves stole a priceless nineteenth-century impressionist painting. But it doesn't say which one. Three. 
Whoa, did you see what happened to Camilla? No, I didn't. What happened to dear Camilla? Well, she was wearing some divine white crop designer jeans and the waiter spilt red wine all over them. She was absolutely livid. I bet. Four. Don't you think it's time we got a new car? This one's clapped out. Listen, I like my little old second-hand Mini, and it's not clapped out, yet. 5. You look wet and cold. Well, we went on an exhausting six-mile coastal walk in the rain. Worth it, though. The views were stunning. Mmm, my idea of hell. 6. How come you turned him down? Where do I begin? First off, he smokes revolting, fat, smelly Havana cigars. Need I say more? 7. I've never heard of Philippa Gregory. Really? She's just written a great new historical novel, and loads of her stuff is adapted for TV. Hmm, I guess historical novels just aren't my kind of thing. 8. Did you go around to meet the new neighbours? I did. They're settling in well. They've just bought an amazing, massive HD TV. It almost fills one wall, and it turns itself on when you speak to it. What? How on earth does it do that? Two point seven. Jemima J. by Jane Green. Chapter one. God, I wish I were thin. I wish I were thin, gorgeous, and could get any man I want. You probably think I'm crazy. I mean, here I am, sitting at work on my own with a massive double-decker club sandwich in front of me. But I'm allowed to dream, aren't I? Half an hour to go of my lunch break. I finish my sandwich and look furtively around the office to see whether anyone is looking. It's OK. The coast is clear. So I can pull open my top drawer and sneak out the slab of chocolate. Ah, another day in my humdrum life. But it shouldn't be humdrum. I'm a journalist, for God's sake. Surely that's a glamorous existence. I love the English language, playing with words. But sadly, my talents are wasted here at the Kilburn Herald. I hate this job. When I meet new people and they ask what I do for a living, I hold my head up high and say, I'm a journalist. I then try to change the subject. The inevitable question after that is, who do you work for? I hang my head low, mumble the Kilburn Herald and confess that I do the top tips column. Every week I'm flooded with mail from sad and lonely people in Kilburn with nothing better to do than write in with questions like What's the best way to bleach a white marbled lino floor? And I have a pair of silver candlesticks. The silver is now tarnished. Any suggestions? And every week I sit for hours on the phone ringing lino manufacturers, silver makers and ask them for the answers. This is my form of journalism. Ben Williams is the deputy news editor. Tall and handsome. He is also the office Lothario. Ben Williams is secretly fancied by every woman at the Kilburn Herald, not to mention the woman in the sandwich bar who follows his stride longingly as he walks past every lunchtime. Ben Williams is gorgeous. His light brown hair is casually hanging over his left eye, his eyebrows perfectly arched, his dimples when he smiles in exactly the right place. He is the perfect combination of handsome hunk and vulnerable little boy.
2.8 Expressions with Word 1. We couldn't help laughing. It was too funny for words. <laughs> I know, but it was her worst nightmare wearing the same dress as someone else at a posh do like that. 2. I think he's boring. He has nothing to say for himself. He may be a man of few words, but I think he's worth listening to. 3. Pam just prattles on and on, usually about herself. You can't get a word in edgeways. I know. I thought she'd never shut up. 4. Come on. You know you can trust me. What? Trust you again? You're kidding. You don't know the meaning of the word. 5. I've got the latest Apple iPad Air. It's the last word in tablets. I love it. <laughs> Lucky you. You always have the latest thing. Six. No, I don't want anything for it. I don't need two computers. You can have it. That's so kind of you. I'm lost for words. I can't thank you enough. Seven. Well, not to mince my words, I don't think you stand a chance of getting that job. Huh. Thanks for your vote of confidence. Eight. You said I had no chance. Well, you'll have to eat your words. I got the job. You didn't. More fool me. You must be cleverer than I thought. Nine. I reckon selfie is the latest buzzword. It's even in the Oxford Dictionary now. Yeah, I can believe it. Everybody's taking selfies. I've just bought a selfie stick. Ten. This is just between you and me. Don't breathe a word to anyone else. I won't tell a soul. I promise.